guys and welcome to another dog organization video. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I've changed the setting again and I think this one works a lot better. Um, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. But um, she really wants to come in here but I feel like if she comes in here She's going to want a lot of attention and I can't give her that attention right now because I'm giving you guys that attention right now. So yeah, you might hear her a little bit in the background, but hopefully she will go downstairs and have a little nap somewhere. Yeah, so what do we think of the new setup? I think this is the one that's going to work um, because the lighting, my house is so dark. <laughs> so I do love filming in the grooming room, it's a lot easier for me setup wise because I have my desk and I have everything around me but it's really really dark and honestly I just don't think that that's the way to go with it. So maybe when I get some proper lighting and things I can film in there or if and when we move because we don't own this house so um, we will be moving in the next six to twelve months or so probably um because we're looking and we are hoping to buy as well so but anyway one of the requirements that I will have when we move is that we have a house that has got good lighting in it and that there's not only one room actually there's two rooms in this house that I can film one is here and this is because I've got a skylight here and I've also got a window here um I've actually got one behind me but I have the blind clothes so you know backlighting and things like that um but yeah it's this one and the bathroom and for some reason the bathroom has four windows and it is really light and the rest of the house isn't I mean this is good for you know doing my makeup and getting ready and things but it's not so great if you want to film YouTube videos and you've got to do it in the bathroom um, unless of course I'm bathing the dogs then it's really handy um, also speaking of dogs they are in their crate back there and that is because uh, kind of like Lola they'll want a lot of attention um, I mean one or one of them might go in the bed but other than that they'll probably want my attention so they're going for a little quiet time in their crate. Um, in case you're wondering, they have a big huge crate where they actually both go into. And that crate, they can both stretch out, they can both stand up, they can both walk around. In fact, they play in there and everything. Um, but they like sleeping together, so they sleep in the crate together. So yeah, um, let's get into the video, I suppose. As from the title, you can see, what the title is up here or down here, um, you can see that it is a dog organization video and it's not going to be the same as the last one. This one I want to tell you all about my dog organization planners and planning. So yeah, let's get to it. Oh, before, just on a small side note, I have my little mug and I have to say I think this is my favourite mug of this season so far and that is my little ghost mug. How cute is it? I don't know if you can see. I'll put it up. It's like very shiny. It's kind of iridescent I think the word is um, and it's very beautiful and yeah it's my little mug. It's so cute and I had my little tea in there now. So yeah I'm just going to put that down there for a second while um, I tell you all about my planners. <laughs> Okay, so I have three ultimate dog mom planner styles at the moment and I'm going to go through one of them with you, but I do have two other styles as well. So I've printed out, these are the three printable styles. I do have two digital styles as well and that's if you have a digital planner and you want to put it onto your iPad or something like that and then use a stylus to use it. So I have two of those, one of them is the marble style and the other one is the leopard print style. The leopard print style I have not turned into a printable just yet but I will do this very very soon within the next few days. So. If you want to check that out, then um, I will leave all the links, of course, below. But at the moment, I have three printable styles. I'm going to move back a little bit because I feel like I'm a bit too close. Okay, so I have three printable styles at the moment. I have my original style, which is the marble style. So I'm not, I hope the light isn't washing it out too much. I think it is. So I will, of course, put um, a little 
image here of what it looks like but this is the um, marble style. So the marble has marble all over and then rose gold at the side and then it just says the ultimate dog mom planner um, or dog mom multiple planner and it says here uh, life is just better with a dog which it is. So that's the first style. Okay. So the second style I created is two, the next two styles are two autumn styles that I've created for this Ultimate Dog Mom Planner. So all the interior stuff are the same is the styles that'll be different and that is to suit the different styles of different people who want to um, pick it up. So this is the first one that I have and this one is kind of like a blustery day style. I think that's what I like to call it. And uh, you know you got your scarf and your latte and your pumpkins and your leaves and all that kind of good stuff there. So that is the first autumn style. Now the second autumn style, I'm just gonna put it there because it's going to fall there anyway. The second autumn style I've printed out and this is my little folder. And this is the ultimate um, dog mom autumn style and this is the one with the little dogs and has little scarves, little Ugg boots, your books, your wine, your slippers. It's kind of a cozy autumn style I would say. So this is that. So inside you have is a 50 page planner. So I'm also going to take cutaway shots so don't worry but um, so the first thing you have is your year at a glance. So we have 2002 and 2003 as we are in between years, I suppose. I mean, we're technically in 2022, but of course in a couple of months it'll be 2023. And I didn't want this um, planner to become obsolete in like two months. So you have both your planners here, or both your year guides, or year at a glance, I should say, here. And then next thing we have is the dog profile. So in the profile, it's just all about your dog and all about the cute things, you know. I mean, their names, their date of birth, what time they came home, their quirky habits, what you love most, and their personality traits as well. So it's just a cute thing to fill out with them. The next thing is kind of important, and that is your contact list. So you have your breeder and our shelter info you have your vet information your groomer information your sitter information and then there's two spaces for other here um if you want to just add anything else in that specific to your dog next we have the vaccination log um there are a few of these to print out i just print out one at the moment because that's all i need and then i'll add them as it grows then we have the flea and tick log, the worming log. I think actually for me personally, the flea and tick log and the worming logs are the most important. Um, we have a scheme with our vet and they give us the medication we need every three months to make sure the dogs get their medication on time. And we do get, um, what you call it, uh, message, reminder, that kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it kind of just happens that we're in there and they're like, oh, by the way, you know, they actually need this at the time. However, it would actually be really good for me to know when that's happening because I always forget. And I'm like, oh, did they get it like two months ago or did they get it? When did they get it? Especially around flea, um, not flea, but tick season and things like that. I like to be aware of that. Um, so, yeah, keeping record of that for myself is really important. Of course, keeping record of my vaccinations, but with most um, vets, they give you a vaccination card so you can see that as, as well. Sorry, excuse me. Looks like I need a little ghost drink. How cute. I might give him a name. Maybe I'll call him Casper. Casper the Cup. I like it. So next one thing we have is very important to me and that is the grooming log. It is so important to groom your dog as most of you will know. I am a dog groomer and yeah dog grooming is just a really important thing not only for the cleanliness of your dog but also the health and hygiene benefits that go with it as well especially if you've been inside a dog. I know a lot of people actually keep their dogs outside because of the dirt you know I, I know that it's kind of it definitely was a common thing in Ireland um, 
back in the day not so much now but it, it still is with the bigger dogs now I would say be like oh they're too dirty they're too smelly you know to come inside and then they don't have kind of a handle on their dogs they haven't brought their dogs to a groomer when they were puppies and they just leave the dog outside and a lot of times actually dogs would be inside dogs until they get bigger and then they're you know smelly and dirty and they leave them outside and to me that's just oh such a waste you know I mean they could have that dog really as a proper part of their family inside their home and instead the dog is outside uh the dog's unhappy and the family usually aren't that happy about it either so you know anyway grooming lock <laughs> very important and it kind of tells you what type of groom you gave your dog the date you gave your <laughs> Ugh, sorry the date you groomed your dog and then when you think your dog's next due their groom. So then when you look at it, you can go, oh, well, I thought they were supposed to be doing it this week, but I don't have time. So maybe early next week I'll do it. And it just gives you a good idea of that. Next is a fun one. And that is just birthday and gotcha day planning. So the date of the party, dog friends to invite, human friends to invite, decorations, presents and food as well. Finally in this section we have the puppy growth chart so if you have a puppy this is just a fun one. It's good as well to keep an eye on things you know for health reasons and things like that but it just says the date you got it, the starting weight and then kind of the age and how the weight progresses. To be honest with you even um, as they get older keeping track of their weight is very important especially for Oscar because he actually has heart conditions so keeping track of his weight is actually really important to us. Um, so yeah, if you know you want to uh, keep track of their little weight and things like that for health reasons or whatever, um, that is there for you as well. The next pack, I do actually have this as a separate pack on Etsy as well, so you can check that out. But the next pack is actually all about training your dog. So if you think you only need that, you can go ahead and just pick up that pack. So in this, we have our training goals. So there's kind of 15 all, all overall training goals. Um, but of course you could print out another sheet and have like 30 if you wanted them. Then we go on to weekly training goals. So there's actually a space here for every week of the year. Then your training plan. So you have your start date, your trick or behavior you wanna train, how you intend to train, train this to your dog and when to start training this particular trick or behavior. Then you have your training log so you can take it off and then you have your trick log so you can write down the tricks that they perfected um, and when they perfected it. So then we have the progress report. So if you have a behavior or trick, you can pro um, track its progress over the weeks for an eight week period. Um, hopefully by the eight week period, they would have a better idea or handle of that trick or behavior. Now, if you have a newer dog, whether that be a rescue dog or a new puppy, then I have potty training log here and crate training log as well, because these are very important when a dog is living in the home with you and your family. Um, potty training, obvi for obvious reasons, we don't want accidents in the house. And then crate training is just a godsend. I mean, my two are in the their crate right now and you can't hear a peep out of them. And that is because they are resting and relaxing because they know when they go into their crate, it's time to have a little rest, you know, it's a happy place. And sometimes they even play in their crate because they have enough space to do so. But most of the time it's a place to go to just settle down and relax a little bit now. So yeah, crate training, do you know, I could actually do a whole video about crate training, so maybe I should do that, just talk about it, but honestly, if you're thinking about crate training your dog, I actually 100% recommend it, you won't regret it. So the next section of the pack, um, I'm not sure what to call it, it's more of the helpful guide section, I think, maybe that's what I should call it, but I don't have an official name for it. So the first thing is a new dog shopping list. So this could be for either your new rescue or your new um, puppy or whatever. And it's just a two page training uh, shopping list of all the things that you could possibly need. Now there is stuff that you'll definitely need and then there is extras as well that you might wanna include just to be a little bit extra. You know, I like that. I like to be a little bit extra when it comes to my dogs, if you can't tell already. Um, 
but yeah so I've added in those as well then we have a puppy proofing checklist um but this uh sorry pet proofing checklist I was just gonna say this is not just for puppies this is for older dogs too it's also not for just when you get your dog I purposely didn't put dates into these so that you can start at any time of the year and use it for however long you want so you could use this for the autumn season and then you could get a different pack or a different um journal for a different season and then I have overall ones like the marble effect and the leopard print and things like that so it can be all year round so you can just print them out as much as you want and use them over and over again so it's all about you your individual style and how you like to organize your dog so yeah we have pet proofing checklist here that will help you to um, eliminate kind of accidents or problems um, when you first get your dog the next thing I have is really important, but I don't think a lot of people know about it, and that is having a canine first aid kit. I mean, show of hands, how many people have a canine first aid kit? Because if you're putting your hand up right now, then well done you, because honestly, not many people have it. Not many people even think of it until something happens. I personally do. It's not because, you know, I'm a goody two-shoes. It's also because I'm a groomer. So when I became a groomer, I was alerted to the fact that, you know, you, you need a canine first aid kit. And now I'm like, wow, how is this not a normal thing in people's houses, you know? I mean, how many accidents do dogs have all the time? And when they happen, not only do you have no idea what to do, but you have nothing to help them either. So I thought I would help out with this a little bit. So I've included a canine first aid kit. It is a basic first aid kit. In fact, you probably have some of this stuff in your house for your own first aid kit and your own kind of first aid needs so they can actually do two jobs in one however I would kind of recommend that you have a different separate bag just for the dogs um, and or cats as well if you have cats but just for the animals put it in a little bag put it in a little box just label it dog care first aid kit whatever and just have it there and then if something happens you just are reassured in the knowledge that you have something there the next thing I put in was a uh, pet saving CPR. Again, another super important one that nobody really knows about. I mean, to be honest, even though we learn in school, not a lot of people know even about human saving CPR. Um, I mean, I've done it, what, three or four times? I forget it, you know? But dog or pet saving CPR is just as important. So I've put a little guide in here as well. And then, you know, just to help out, because, you know, I like to help you guys, um, I put in puppy tips for new parents, um, and I also put in rescue dog tips for new adoptive parents. So, yeah. Uh, I myself, as you know, am the proud dog mom to two rescue dogs, two rescue collies. Well, Elka or Ellie is a collie kind of Kelpie mix. Um, what do we think? We're going to DNA test. I keep saying this and we're going to do it and I want to do it at Christmas time and I'm not sure why, but it feels Christmassy and I just want to do it. So, but she is definitely Kelpie. We think there could be collie in there as well. And then Oscar is border collie. Um, also, I work with a rescue center that works mainly with uh, rescuing ex-working dogs and uh, mainly ex-collies, Irish collies, Kelpies and that is because that is the most predominant breed around here that needs rescuing and that needs rehoming and rehabilitating but also they are one of the hardest breeds as well to rehome um, especially in this area. I know it varies from area to area to country to country, but in this area, rehoming collies is a harder thing to do because they are seen as working dogs and they're not really seen as pets. So a lot of the time, I mean, I've, I, I do have this rant all the time, but anyway, yeah, I'm not going to get into the whole, uh, collie thing. If you, I mean, you've heard it in so many videos, I'd say at this stage. But yeah, from my time working with um, this rescue and rescuing these two dogs myself, I have, you know, I've been through it. I've got some tips here for you. So I've got two pages of tips to help you if you rescue your own little best friend. So there we go. And then if you decide to get a puppy, then I've got new puppy tips as well, just to help you settle them into, because you've got to remember they're babies, you know, so they need some help. So this is the Ultimate Dog Mom planner. planner. It has everything in. 
like I said, there's training packs, there'll also be health packs, and maybe I might do kind of, what, what, what did I call it? The general helpful guideline pack or something like that. I can't even remember what I called it. I'll have to wait until I edit this to find out. But yeah, maybe I'll just like split that up as well. Because the thing is, while I think it's amazing to have everything included, and I'm sure a lot of you will think that too, um, not everybody wants everything that's included, so I decided, you know, I could split them up and you could kind of pick and choose what you wanted from when you wanted it. Okay, I'm going to take one little ghost tea break. Little Casper, ooh, it got bright all of a sudden. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about one more thing that is super exciting that I just literally it's not even like out yet but it will be you know after this video today um is my dog mom Halloween pack so this pack was designed especially for Halloween so that you could have the absolute best Halloween with your dog so as you know, um, I'm the founder, or you might not know, but I'll tell you now. Um, I'm the founder of Lover Dogs. So Lover Dogs, to me, our mission is that we want to support, encourage, and empower dog owners to live their absolute best lives with their dogs. That is the plan, okay? I want to help you and your dog just live the best life you possibly can together. And one of the things that I came up with is uh, the Dog Mom Halloween Pack. So... This Halloween pack is a 12 page pack and it actually includes everything you could need for Halloween. So this is my little design, I mean it is cute, uh, even if I do say so myself. And then we just have a little bit about, you know, about me and I also want to say, hey, how are you? I want to connect with you and say happy Halloween of course. Then. The first thing we're going to talk about is a bucket list. So I am a big believer in bucket lists. As you know, I'm already doing one for um, autumn at the moment. If you have not seen that, I will leave a little link. But yeah, so here I have all the bucket list ideas. And then I have just a little thing here um, to remind you that just because your dog might not like one aspect doesn't mean it can't be tailored to your dog. So for example, if they don't like, like I put here, if they don't like costumes, some dogs might like to wear costumes. Thankfully, my dogs love costumes and I'm really excited about that. But if they didn't like costumes, then you can get festive colors, harnesses, bandanas, collar charms. Like there are loads of other ways that you can get them involved in the fun without, I mean, like maybe they're not okay with costumes, but they're okay with little headpieces and you can put little, you know, little devil ears or something on them. I mean, there is a way to include them even if they don't um, like to wear costumes. The next is just a section for your own bucket list ideas. So even though I have a list of all my bucket list ideas to give you, um, maybe you think of more there's more specific to your own um, life or family or environment or something like that. The next thing we have is costume ideas. So I've given you costume ideas just for your dog. I've also given you costume ideas for couples costumes. Okay, you know, don't judge, but <laughs> I like to match my dogs and I like to match with them and to be honest if I can get um you know a whole family uh matching which you know spoiler alert I do plan on doing this around Christmas so and I hope to get all of you in on the fun as well but uh I'll wait a little bit longer before I announce that as we're talking about Halloween right now Next, there is a section for your ideas because, you know, I'm sure you all have better ideas and amazing ideas than um, I will come up with. And if you do, please leave... Oh, sorry, brightness. If you do, please leave a comment below and tell me your ideas or tell me what you've dressed your dog up in the past as because I love this. So please, um, I love this for ideas. Also, a couple of costume ideas. I mean, come on. So yeah, leave me a comment, love it. Next is game time. So I have uh, one game that you can play with your dog as well as some other ideas that you can do with your dog as well. Ooh. Oh, we appear to have a blank page. 
that is fine. Oh, next is another game and another game. So we've got three games there that you could play with your dog or dogs. And then finally here, well, it's not really finally, but we have some safety tips as well. So, you know, sometimes it's easy to forget when you're having so much fun that there are some kind of safety tips or guidelines that maybe you should put in place first and then you can have the absolute best time with your dog. Because although our dogs live in a very human world, they're not humans so like certain things that might bother them we won't even think about you know so I just put in some kind of tips that um that are really good uh to just I don't know take note of before you start that holiday Halloween season the one thing that I do want to point out even though they're all super important the one thing that's screaming at me now and it's because I put it in capital letters because it's so important is xylitol so if you're um You've got children that are trick-or-treating or if like me you don't have children but you just want to have you know sweets and candy everywhere then just be aware that if your dog gets into it dogs are crafty okay if dogs want to get into your sweets they will get into them so I just wanted to point out that if your dog do dog does get into your sweets or your candy or anything like that please make sure that there's no xylitol in it or if you have things that may have xylitol in them, have them high up, have them away from the dogs because xylitol is deadly, okay? Xylitol is a sugar substitute, so sometimes, especially sugar-free and things like that, will have xylitol in them. And if they have xylitol in them, your dog, just by having the smallest amount of xylitol, can actually, it can be fatal to them. It, it is absolutely deadly. I've actually had to bring in my cat in the past because I thought there was a chance she may have e eaten chewing gum. I didn't see any signs, but it didn't matter. Xylitol works that quickly that you have to get in. I think you have about an hour. So you have to get them into the vet immediately, get them treated um, because it is so deadly. And that's just one of the things I really want to point out because this year is obviously huge for Halloween sweets. And then we have the safety tips here so there's two pages of safety tips just to go over um just so everything can be safe for you guys and then the next thing i have here is some baking some treats for your dog so like i said trick or treat treats are big so but one thing i want to do is neither of these are baking so you don't actually have to bake anything if you do want to bake stuff there are stuff all over the internet you can check on pinterest and instagram and just google it you know they're all everywhere but i want to do really easy ones that were really festive so that you could really like get you, you and your dog into the whole holiday season without it being so much work so this is peanut butter and pumpkin treats so these are you just mix them up together there's yogurt in them as well and then you freeze them and then there's pumpkin puppuccinos so you can make your own little homemade pumpkin puppuccinos you just get your little cups you can put little stickers on them and they will be so cute they will be very instagrammable as well as enjoyable for your dog too so that's them i wanted to make them really easy you know i don't want you to look at it and go Oh my God, that's gonna take forever. No, these literally take less than five minutes. You just mix it up and put it in, done. So then I just have a little page telling you where you can, you know, find out more and join the Lover Dogs pack and all that good stuff. And then finally, this was actually an accident that worked out really well. So I got a new printer the other day, obviously, you know, for all my printing needs. But I got a new printer and to test it out, Joe actually picked this from my Instagram and printed it out. And I just thought, wow, that is so pretty and makes such a good print. So I've actually included it in, it in the pack as well. And in the, it just says, which is a, something that I truly believe and I say it all the time. It's all over my website. It's all over everywhere, which I'm actually doing a new website at the moment. So, you know, the link's down there. Um, that'll probably take you to the old one for a little bit, for a few days. But then it'll go to the new one. And I'm really excited about the new website. Anyway, this saying is everywhere. So you might have seen me say it before. Or you might have heard me say it or seen it somewhere on my social media or something. But it just says, 
Together we can change the world one dog at a time. And I truly, truly believe that. If we can change the lives of our dogs that we have and the dogs around us, then we truly can change the world for them. And I, it's just something I believe in my heart and in my soul. So I've included this little print as well. Um, so yeah, that is the Halloween pack. And now I'm going to tell you something a little bit surprising. So yes, you will be able to buy this pack if you want to, but you can also get it completely for free. This pack is actually going to be going to all my email subscribers um, as a free gift for Halloween. The, if you want to be included in this, you can just sign up and get this completely free for you to download as well as a Halloween style mini magazine for Lover Dogs. So Lover Dogs um, has a mini magazine that goes out every single month and this magazine is only for my email subscribers. And they get things like this absolutely free just because I love them so much. Um, I love my subscribers, I love my pack that I have and that is why I love to give them things. I love to give them free things. I love to give them early access. I love to give them discounts. I love to give them everything. So that is why I always wanted to create a magazine. And when I did, I decided, you know what? It's going to be for my email subscribers only. This magazine is going to include stories from them and you know, all the fun things as well. So that is included in my email. But also this Halloween pack is going to be a free gift for them this year, this, um, year, this Halloween autumn season. So if you want to be included in that, then you can just click the link below and as your free gift and as your thank you and your welcome to the pack, you will automatically, immediately receive your Halloween pack as a free gift from me. You will then, um, depending on when you sign up, will also receive my mini magazine as well, the Lover Dogs mini magazine. And then going into the holiday season, you will be receiving a lot more gifts like this and of course your magazines as well. So yeah, if you wanna be a part of the pack, then please click the link below and I cannot wait to connect with you there. If alternatively you decide, hmm, it's not really for me just yet, then you can of course go over and buy this as well if you want to join in on the Halloween fun. So yeah, that is my um, organization video for you today and my fun printable video for you today. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. Um, and then you get loads of more doggy filled content coming your way every single week. Um, once again, it's been absolutely wonderful to chat with you today. I just love sitting down with you, talking to you, um, and just talking about dogs. I mean, who doesn't want to talk about dogs all day? So yeah, also liking this new setup. Uh, tell me what you think. And yeah, I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye friends.